Hey everybody, it's Angie and this is Life at Hill House. So today I'm gonna to take you out and look at the new cut flower garden. I'm gonna show you what all I have going on in there and discuss a little bit about what I think is working in there and what isn't and why. All right, so we're gonna to head to the cut flower garden. If you are new to the channel, let me let you know that we are in the neighborhood, so sometimes there's a little bit of traffic. And right now, there's a lot of noise from the cicadas. Can you hear them? We're in Maryland, Zone 7A, and the cicadas are really showing off right now. I'll be so glad when they're gone. And you're gonna see them flying by in the video, I'm sure, because they're pretty much everywhere. All right, so in a previous video, I showed a little bit about how this cut flower garden was made. All right, so I shot the whole video <laughs> for a while. It took me a while, and then I go in to check everything, and all the clips, there's like some dust or something on the lens. So let's try this again. So this is the cut flower garden. Right now, the sun is beaming, <laughs> and it's super bright. It's okay, we're gonna work through it. So I'm learning a lot this year with this cut flower gardening. I'm learning about what works in what spot, what needs what water, what grows together, how big things get. I'm learning, well, I'm going to learn more about harvesting them because a question that I have for a lot of these is like, when is it ready to harvest? Um, I know some things are one and done. You cut it, it's that's the end of the plant, especially because these are mostly annuals. Uh, some of them are cut and come again. So the more you deadhead it, the more you cut it, the more it grows, the more branches, the more flowers. So I'm not really sure which ones go that way. Let's look at what's doing really well and what's struggling. So I'm in zone 7A, which I probably already mentioned. And... It's been unseasonably warm. It's been like in the 80s, 90s already. It's not even June. So some things are really loving this heat and some things aren't. Back here, we'll, we'll start with what really is loving life. These sunflowers are loving life. My hollyhocks. Back here seem to be doing pretty good. But as we come down the line, they just get really, really small. They're not really doing much of anything. So I think I'm going to pop them out and pop in some sunflower seeds. We are growing apparently a cicada plant here. We've got lots of them growing around here. No, really. We do have lots of cicadas. They're like dive bombing me. So I'm probably going to be diving and ducking while I'm doing this video. I try to do everything early in the morning. They're not real active in the evening um, or early in the morning. But this time of day, whoo, goodness gracious, they are everywhere. Okay, so sunflowers are doing great. Um, something else that's doing pretty darn well is um, dahlias. So now these are seed dahlias. Up at the top uh, end of the bed, we have some tuber dahlias. Now these will form tubers, but these started out as seed. And a lot of times the seed dahlias are look like this. They're not like a dinner plate. They're like this sweet little baby right here. So we've got a lot of them. They seem to be doing great. Marigolds are doing great, but what I've learned is marigolds probably aren't really going to do well for a cut flower because the stems are so small. So while I know that marigolds seem to love it here and I'll plant them somewhere else, probably not in a cut flower garden next year. Cosmos. Cosmos do really well here. I already knew that because this was previously our uh, pollinator garden, which was a lot of Cosmos. So they're doing pretty good. They're really short. And that's something I have a lot going on of that I'm a little confused about is all of my plants that I was expecting to be tall are really short. So I'm not sure what that is. You know, I'm watering fertilizing fertilizing weekly i'm using a miracle grow water soluble weekly i usually use the proven winners i could not get my hands on it in time this year so i just went with the with the miracle grow 
but these are all doing great so here i have some yarrow hasn't really done much but it looks happy sweepers come in so hold on okay so the street cleaner sweeper is going it'll be back by in a minute i'm sure uh sweet peas not doing great maybe too hot for them um Seleucia seems to be doing really well status i guess it's doing well i've never grown it before i'm not really sure what it's supposed to be like Galardia seems to be doing good just take a minute to look how pretty this is this is the kilimanjaro marigold like oh she's so pretty pests haven't been too bad out here i've seen one plant that's really full of pests and i'll show it to you um uh, zinnias so this is the zinnia couple rows of zinnia i got mixed feelings about what's going on with my zinnia i've got some queen lime i've got some zinderella i've got some el dorado these are all like the tallest one is like 10 12 11 inches i was expecting my zinnias to be a lot taller but you can see they're really small and that is the one plant that has just one of them mind you that is covered in aphids can you see them oh man i mean it is covered so i might have to release some ladybugs out here we already re released some in the potager garden in the potager garden um because my roses were just covered but oh god oh, cicadas <laughs> you hear them fluttering by you you're just your whole stomach clenches up in fear and uh, can you guys see i don't know if you can see them oh man it is it's something oh okay it is really something let's go back to what we're talking about <laughs> um snapdragons seem to be doing good we have this one really nice tall one the rest of them are still pretty little And then you're going to see some chlorosis. I have one swath here in the gardens that suffers horribly. Um, ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 Bugs. Oh, gosh. Okay. So there's one swath here in the garden that really suffers from chlorosis. It goes from this tree, my dogwood, and it goes in like a diagonal across all the way to here and in this little bed you know chlorosis because you've got yellowing but you also have dark veining you really see evidence of it here so this tree was really bad it was like really yellow it was starting to burn so i've been treating it with iron tune and it's come a long way it's looking a million times better but you can see all of these plants are suffering so i put some iron tone out here yesterday to, on these but it's just this row right here and then it goes over it's it's really weird it's just one strip and everything else seems to be doing really good as far as the chlorosis is concerned. Sorry guys, I cut you off because the street sweepers came through. Every time they come through, I think of the movie Labyrinth, which is one of my favorite movies. And it's a, a great scene where the sweepers come through, the cleaners. Every time I hear a street sweeper, I think of that. Such a nerd. <laughs> or is it geek? Because it's not the same, nerd and geek. I'm not sure. Another thing that I'm really working on trying to learn is about harvesting the flowers. When is the best time to harvest for cut flowers? Because like, say for instance, uh, this Cosmo, this is the double click series. Look how pretty she is. Now is she harvestable? And like, and also like, I'm, one of the things I'm not good at is what is a one-time bloomer? So 
I know that like some of my single stem sunflowers, I cut the, once I cut it, it's gone, it's done. So some of, of the, sorry, I had to stop again for the traffic noise. Some of the sunflowers are, you cut it once it's done. But others, they're like cut and come again. I think we have one that's about to show off. I'm not sure the variety that one doesn't have a tag. So yeah, some of these, like I know the, um, like the Pro Cut series is a one time, one and done. But then others are branching varieties. I believe this Soraya is a branching, and that's my tiny little one down there that's not really doing much of anything. I believe it's a branching. It seems that my tags have just disappeared. Where did you put my tags, Mr. Cicada? They're just here to make me miserable. Is that right? <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> Let's go away from the cicada. I planted a really wide variety of plants so that I could learn what does well, what doesn't do well, what holds up well in a vase what doesn't hold up well in a vase what i'm just good at growing and what i'm horrible at growing so we have a row of sunflowers we have zinnias we have dahlias we've got marigolds celosia um then we have like a bunch of random like we got a little patch of um carnations right here we've got stock we've got um chamomile Ooh. We've got nasturtiums, we've got galardia, we've got some daisies, we've got rubecchia. The Gerber daisies are doing great. They're doing phenomenal out here. <sighs> ah, they're coming for me, guys. They're really coming for me. Okay. <laughs> so everything is a test. Now this bed is 30 foot long by about uh, 11 feet wide next year it's definitely going to get bigger i'm going to bring it over this way uh probably another two feet yeah definitely another two feet oh gosh and next year i don't have to worry about these cicadas <laughs> guys i know they don't hurt you but oh my goodness just just look oh i just gosh oh my gosh okay i'm gonna try to wrap this up as quick as i can because i'm just having a total panic at this point because they were it's the time of the day when they are really at their height you can hear them well you can hear a plane as well but you can see them just f buzzing around flying here and there and everywhere the noise is enough to really just wear you down alone so here we have our tuber dahlias here we have a pom-pom mix. We've got salmon, which is um, just a little dahlia. It's not like a dinner plate. Then we have some cream de cassis. We've got foxy lady and cafe au lait. Two, four, six, eight, ten. What? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So we have eleven doubt da tuber dahlias. They're doing really good. Only one didn't show up, and it was just like, it didn't even say what kind of dahlia it was. It was just a random bulb at a big box store. I think one of the things that I really got to narrow down out here is a watering situation. This is full sun all day. I'm just beating sun. So we've got, Travis got us a soaker hose, um, some soaker hoses to put out here, and they really just didn't put out enough. They were, it just wasn't enough for this bed. You had to press it tight up against the plant and it just wasn't what, I, what we need. This area is just way too hot and dry. So we really need something like an actual, oh God, an actual drip irrigation system. Sorry guys, an actual drip irrigation system to, um, 
make sure that these are all getting consistent water. And I think with that, I'm going to see a huge difference in the way everything is growing. So everything right now is like really short and stunted. I expected the zinnias to be tall, like three foot. I expected the snaps to be tall, the stalk to have nice long stems, but none of that's happening. Everything is just really small. Everything's green and looking good, but everything's a lot smaller than what I thought it was going to be. So I think water may be an issue. Um, what else did we grow here? Said we got some nasturtium. It seems to be doing good. These are asters, so they're doing good. Um, pin cushion doing good. So I did throw a few uh, perennials in here. These daisies are doing great, and the, the vase life for those for me was like 10, 11 days or so, so I'm really happy with them. But yeah, so we, you know, it's really just an experiment. You guys get to hang out with me and experiment. When I planted these, I just did Biotone starter fertilizer and I did a Scott's topsoil mixed in with the native soil because we have really bad clay soil. So nothing fancy. And I mean, everything's doing really good. I'm watering them right now. I'm watering them in the morning before the sun and again in the evening by hand with the hose. They're getting overhead water. But it's just, you know, I'm just learning. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm really excited about these sunflowers. Like super excited. I'm pretty excited about the dahlias too. And this red spike amaranth. Come on, baby, because I seen you in a video that somebody posted and you were so beautiful that I cannot wait until you grow up so I can harvest you. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I can't wait until you grow up so I can harvest you. See what else we have growing out here. Um, we have this Mexican sunflower. It is real happy. Look at that. It is. I've never grown this before. So if you don't watch the Stivers, Zach and Jen, the Stivers Homestead, make sure that you check them out because they're great. They're a great family, full of information. I love watching them. And they recommended this plant to their viewers. And so there we go. That's the first one. Zach Stivers, thank you for recommending that because it's looking great. And I'm going to add more next year for sure. Again, not sure what's going on with these zinnias. Anybody know? Like, it can't be that. Okay, guys, I just got hit in the face by a cicada. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh. oh, I had to take a minute to compose myself because that cicada hit me straight in the cheek. Wow. All right. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. That is unbelievable. That is really unbelievable. Okay. So, anyway, like I was saying, oh. Guys, have you ever seen anybody just have a complete freak out attack on a video? <laughs> That's me right now. Oh my goodness, look, this one is like. <sighs> just breathe, Ange. Breathe. You'll get through this. <laughs> we'll do it together. <laughs> just get through it. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right. So, zinnias, are they going to get taller, guys? Do you know? Comment. Let me know what you know about zinnias because I swore they were tall plants. I know that I'm pretty sure that the seed packets said they were as well. So they're El Dorado. If you've grown that, if you've grown any of the queen lime, let me know what you think, why these are so small. Um, same with these stock and the snaps. I, I think the stock is mostly just stunted because of the chlorosis. It needs the iron. It needs more fertilization and it needs more water. I think that is what's going on a lot up in this that swath right there where everything is just a hot mess i'm pretty sure people riding by are getting the biggest kick out of watching me flail my arms around while the cicadas try to dive bomb my face <laughs> i really just whoo diving around <gasps> 
Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. Because this is the only way we're going to do this this year is to just deal with these videos with a lot of jumping around because the cicadas are trying to be on me. I shouldn't have wore green. Maybe, maybe I'm wearing green today. Maybe they think I'm a tree. I don't know. Oh my gosh. All right. Do you guys want to like look at these cicadas? You don't want to look at them, do you? Can you see them playing around my tree? They're just so big. All right. Okay, guys. I'm going to have to wrap this up today. <laughs> But as soon as, as soon as the um, <laughs> garden starts to put on a little more growth, as soon as things start to bloom more, we're going to come back out. We're going to walk through. We're going to look closer at the varieties. Hopefully, uh, the cicadas are gone by then. They're only supposed to be here like four weeks. I swear, to, I feel like they've been here for four weeks already. <sighs> so... We'll come back out. We'll reassess the situation. <sighs> All right, look at this little zinnia. Where's she at? So, is she getting leaves or did something eat the leaves off of her petals? Is she hitting petals or did something already eat all of her petals? Don't know. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, guys dive bombed by cicadas out here. Okay. Whew. Goodness. All right. <laughs> Let me pull myself together. But that's it, guys. That is the first look, official first look at the cutting garden. As things get into bloom more or put on some growth or if I have any mysteries that I need help figuring out, we will visit this garden again. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, on the way in, I just had to show you this. Look how beautiful this planter is. Oh, this may be my favorite mix so far ever. This is Supertunia Bermuda Beach. It looks really pink, like almost like bubblegum in the camera, but it's really more of a coral color. And then with these um, super venus and then we've got the prince tuck grass which hasn't really done much yet but i'm hoping it does and then this vinca look how pretty that is oh i love this so stately like this may be my permanent thing every year <laughs> i know it won't but and then one other thing is what in the world is happening with these what these little babies aren't doing anything and last year this thing was full by now and they're getting watered fertilized i don't know what's happening the tree looks better than it's ever looked usually it is a hot mess it looks like it's dying it hardly fills out and this year it looks fabulous and the stuff underneath looks scraggly i don't know trade-off i guess okay guys so I'll leave you with this beautiful image right here of this container. Until next time, guys. Bye.